I've got the pheasant skinned out. We've got that. We know how to do it, bird skin. What we got to do is look at this fat and meat on the inside now. We got to get the head out. What I do on a pheasant and a lot of times on ducks is if you try to take this and peel it all the way up, especially for a beginner, you'll have to end up pulling the head right off. So what you want to do is you want to take and right under the chin, just take a knife get in there and just open up a hole about an inch, two inches long, end up like this right here. Take your scissors, get in here right to the base of the head. Now don't go through on the other side and just go ahead and cut that loose. You got to cut loose, cut the connecting tissue, Okay, now come back down this way, get your craw here, get everything, the windpipe, craw, everything, and grab that bottom of that neck. Hold your skin right here, put it into your hand like this with your neck out of it, and just give it a, just pull gently. And what that'll do is that'll pull that loose from up on the skull. If you got all that connective tissue off of there, you'll end up getting this off. There we go. Now we got that neck. Now what we'll do is we'll save this neck so we can measure it. Okay? Then we'll get a piece of foam material, neck material, and do that. We'll have our neck material. We'll have the right length. Now what you do here, make sure you get this craw out of here. And after you do enough birds, you'll know that they're not, especially on a pheasant, you get up in the neck here, there's very little fat very little fat in the neck area. You can turn this to head inside out, do whatever you want. He was shot in the neck here it looks like. We'll wash that up. Now we've got the head here. What we want to do is we want to turn this head inside out like so. Just kind of just pull gently. You don't want to tear this up. up. And you'll, you'll see how it just kind of inverts on itself like a sock. Take your knife, cut your ears loose, just go, go real slow along here. Let me get my knife a little bit sharper. Scalpels work good in these areas, so. But I, you just cut this connecting tissue, and you'll see where your ear canal is right here. kind of just kind of if you're new to this just kind of play with it and just take it easy cutting it loose you see how it kind of comes loose there okay here's my ear canal right here you see that you will have these on ducks all your birds have ears that going there. And you see how that ear canal come out of there? Now we'll do the same on this side. Here it is right here. Now what we'll do is we'll just kind of keep going. Put a, get this stuff off here. Sometimes you need a little like a paper towel. Otherwise it's kind of slippery. I don't wear rubber gloves when I do most birds because you got to have a good feel for where you're going with that knife. We'll just go ahead and do this here. I did a black pheasant before and evidently the black didn't show up on tape real well. We'll use some of that video. We'll, we'll, walk, we'll do a regular color scheme on a pheasant here, okay? Anyway, we got a lot of things going today. We got a, we're doing a full mount otter. We're getting some deer ready to go out. It's just a, I got two pheasants to mount. It's kind of a hectic day, but we got, I got to do this, so we might as well put it on video. Just go ahead and just keep working that down. Now, when you get to the eyes. You got to be real careful. Just 
like so. Just kind of get that so it goes back. See what we got on the bottom here. Get get this stuff work loose too. That's part of the eye. They have an awfully big eye cavity. What we got here is we got a little bit of bony growth there. We're going to get rid of that. That's why you got to be careful around these eyes. Just kind of go ahead and go do like so. Get that down past there. Keep working that skin down. Now you can get down to the top of the beak here. Get the when we start fleshing it out here, I'll show you the fat that we got. I don't want to get rid of that. And then we're just kind of kind of going like so, and then underneath, and underneath of the bill. of the bill is the tongue. Just go down each side, like so with your knife, and pull this tongue out. See how that tongue come out of there? Now you can feel your bill. It's, it comes right up to here. And the top of the bill is right here. So I'm going to take my knife and just go right down here, just a little bit further. Just pry it loose. Now what we'll do is we'll pop those eyes out. You see why they see so good. Look at this. The comparison of the eye to the rest of the head is huge. Look at the size of that eye. I mean, no wonder they see good. It's right in the back of the skull here. That's where the, the spinal cord goes up I into the skull. I just want to get a little bit of a hole here so I can get in here with a, a tool to scrape that out. And I'll show you here. Just go ahead, and you've got a good scissor, just go ahead and cut off extra meat. Okay. Anyway, we've got the hole right there. And then when we get ready to mount this up, you can see the brain matter right here on the inside. What we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and pop that out of there. You get that brain matter out of there. Bird's got a pretty good sized brain. Just like so. Just go ahead and work around. We'll wash that out. It's kind of yucky stuff. We'll wash that out. We're going to get rid of this stuff. Now we got the head pretty much all cleaned out. We got the eyes out, the brain out. Uh, we're going to run the wheel over these muscular parts of the head. Uh, get this meat out as much as we can and underneath here. I'll show you how we put the, the wheel is turning this way. We just go ahead and start taking some of this meat out of here off the side of the head. We'll build that back up with clay when we get ready to go, ready to mount this up. Just go like so and get rid of some of that stuff. Just like, see that isn't so bad, is it? Now if you don't have one of these wheels, take a wire brush and do it. Just kind of pick away at it with the small scissors if you have to. You know, you can use small scissors like these and just kind of get in these areas like this right here and just cut the meat loose. See how that comes out of there? You can do a lot, you can get a lot of meat out of there with that. A lot of loose stuff. You just got to work a little bit harder than what I'm working on this machine here. Anyway, that's the way that goes. Now you look for any fat here on the back, on this part of the head. And sometimes right under the chin you'll have some. So we'll just look for anything that looks like fat. 
I don't see anything else on there. So we're gonna go down the we're gonna go down the neck. Do is you just go ahead and very lightly because you don't want to bust those feather tips off, the, the end of the feathers. All you want to do is break that surface of that skin, that fat layer, the tissue on the outside here. Just break that and that'll give your soap a chance to uh, break that up. Any place you see kind of a yellowish color, or if you got some meat you want to get rid of on there, just go ahead. You got to be careful on a pheasant. They're kind of they're very thin skin. If you hold that wheel or, or you get a little rough with them, you'll tear a hole in them. And you can repair them, but it's just one of those things that it's, you don't have to do that. So why put a hole in there if you don't have to? Just, just go real gently. You see, I'm just going real gentle. Now I'll go over to the other side here, the neck, like so. If I see anything yellow there, I'll just go ahead and hit that, like I did that. And then we'll go down this side here. We got after after you do a few of these, you know how the feather groups lay. On a pheasant, the feather groups lay a lot different. On a duck, it's almost got feathers all over. Uh, pheasants and turkeys and quail, they have distinct feather groups. All your feathers are located in one area. In between these feather groups, there isn't much. You might have a stray feather here and there. But uh, that's why these things will freeze to death. If it gets real cold and windy, they don't have like a down. They just have what's on the... Uh, it's a little bit of... I don't think you'd call it down on their feathers even. It's just part of the feather. That they can puff up and try to keep warm. But if they get water or ice under those, they're done. They'll, they'll freeze to death in a hurry. Uh, that's why they need good shelter belts to get out of the wind and stuff like that. It's, uh, and we're taking all that away from them. A lot of it, you know. Pheasants like, like country that's got a lot of brush, too. I've had some of my best pheasant hunting in real brushy type of cover. Well, anyway, we're work, we're working down. Enough for the sermon. We're working down this pheasant. Wherever I see a little mead, or I see a little, little, little fat like this here on these feather groups, I just take and break it loose very gently. Turkey's the same way. Now we got the tail here. Now one of the things with the tail on a tur on a pheasant or a turkey, you can take those tails off. Turkey, you always take the tail off to mount it. A pheasant, you can do the same thing. You can either take this tail off, cut it loose, or leave it on. I so I do either way. It doesn't matter. What we're doing is we're skinning this tail out a little bit here, getting her down a little bit further. Well, we'll get this thing here uh, to where we can. Now, what you got here is you got like a tailbone. What we want to do is we want to put a little V cut right there and take that tailbone out, like so. Makes everything lay better. Now, you see right down the back here, we got some fat. Goes right down to the tail. Then what we're going to do is we're going to take the meat off the tail, get in between the feathers. I'll show you here. Now, if you get real rough on the rear end of a bird, their skin is a little bit thinner there. If 
you get real rough with them, you'll end up tearing that skin. You'll have a hole to repair. Kale's got a lot of fat and meat on them. You can get most of it off with the scissors and the knife too. So you don't need this machine here. Okay. What you can do is you take your knife and go like so. You lay your uh, you take your feathers, go down in between each one. Turkeys, you get those real clean. A pheasant, it's it's not as critical as a turkey. You get a little fat, but a turkey or goose or something really has a lot of fat on them. You can spread those apart. See how you can see some opening through there? And that'll get the fat out of there. You take a little wire brush. See how that gets cleaning that up pretty good. We'll turn it around and do the other side. Kind of like so. Just kind of... Work that stuff out of there. Now you don't want to go too far. You don't want to eat your feathers out. Okay. I right, see we've still got a little bit of this tailbone right here. So I'm going to go ahead and try to pry some more of that out of there. Take my scissors. And cut that out of there. there we go. Anyway, we're ready to wash this. Get some suds going. We'll put our pheasant in here. And what you'll see, what'll happen in there after a couple minutes, I'm going to leave the tail feathers up out of the water as much as I can. Now, if I was going to put this in a tumbler, I'd take those tail feathers off. But uh, my tumbler broke down, and it's just as uh, we aren't going to worry about that too much. What this does, this will get the blood off the feathers. Get the fat out of the feathers, out of the underside. And you see here, this is the head. We'll go ahead and swish that head around in there a little bit. Get that washed up and, and then we'll invert it back like so. And then we'll go ahead and wash that head up. We knew he was shot in the neck so we want to make sure that we get that out of there. But anyway, we're, what we're doing here, now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to cut the end of these legs off. Cut the ball off because we don't need that ball on there. Cut them off the, the end of those legs like so. Right up where the ball connects there. You can saw them off, cut them off. But anyway, that's the way that goes. And then we got the wing here. Take the knob off on the wing there, too. You see how that comes off of there? Now, I know the other one broke off, so that wing was broke when it was shot. So what we're going to do is we're going to do something different with that. You see, i got a little bit of flesh here on the leg. So anyway, we're going to wash him up like so. la dee da dee da And okay, we're going to just go ahead and... Maybe for a couple minutes. He's uh he's gonna turn out good. And you can see the water is kind of dirty from that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this pheasant. I'm gonna wring him out. Now if you pull that tail off, it's uh, no biggie because we can. What you could actually do is uh, like on some birds, I'll cut that tail off right in through this area here. And then I'll fan that out on a board. And then when, before I mount it, I'll, put a, I'll let it dry. I'll put some uh, peroxide on it. I'll put a little bit of uh, hot melt. I'll put a pin in there, a U-shaped wire with about two inches coming out. And then I can peg that into the body, the foam body. A little auto body, but it works good too to hold it. 
but and then you could spread that out any way you want to get the desired look anyway we're going to go ahead and, and wring this baby out get most of this soapy water out of here just like so Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to, we're going to fill this with cold water. And let that soak a while in there. With cold water. And what that'll do is that'll, that'll get rid of that soap out of the feathers. I'll let that soak a little bit like so. I want it almost completely dry before I mount it up. There are a lot of different ways you can dry them. If you have a tumbler, that's great. But most beginners don't have a tumbler, so what we're going to do is show you this way here. Just taking what I did is I wrapped it up in newspaper and left it sit while I went and ate lunch, and that drew a lot of the moisture out of it. Another way is you can get a half a gallon of denatured alcohol, uh, put it in a bucket, swish this bird around in there, and what that does, the alcohol will drive the water off and uh, just let it hang up outside for a while till the alcohol evaporates, and then uh, it'll be a lot easier to dry. I got away from using alcohol though because it's very flammable, kind of a toxic substance, so I don't use it anymore. And uh, Try to keep my insurance costs a little bit lower that way by not using toxic chemicals and flammables. I still have a few around, but not like I used to. I just, I just soon take the extra time and, and blow dry them and get the feathers or tumble them and get the feathers nice and fluffy. What we're going to do now is we're going to look for holes. I, I saw some in the wing. We're going to get our needle and thread out and do some repair work now. Get a smaller needle, a J style needle. Okay. We'll sew these holes up. Then uh, we'll wire the bird up, get the neck material and all that stuff ready. Uh, this is going to be a flying bird face in. One wing was broke, so I know that there's a bad hole here somewhere in this wing. Might not have been this one. If it wasn't, it was the other one. These birds were hit pretty good when they were shot, let me tell you. There it is, right in the elbow here. You see that? What we're going to do is we're going to sew that up. I see... Uh, because these wings are actually going to show the back side. So we want to go ahead and <laughs> go ahead and put a couple stitches in there. See what we can do. Huh? Uh, you become pretty proficient at stitching. A lot of do a lot of sewing. I think I've mentioned that before. Where you do a lot of sewing and okay. I went through both sides of this hole. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put two stitches in here to close this one hole up. And uh try not to get any feathers in there. it off if I don't have a scissors handy. I know there's one more hole here in this uh, elbow. Oh, we're going to put one more stitch in here. In fact, we're going to go from one side to the other. That's kind of a...
You sew it up the best you can. Sometimes they, these birds get some pretty good holes in them from being shot. It's some guys. There's not a lot you can do. Just sew up the holes. If it's too bad, then you can just go ahead and suggest maybe another type of mount for it. But uh, you don't want to. Sometimes the customer he wants the mount he wants. And there isn't much else you can do. And this customer is that way. He wants this bird flying. He got one flying mount and he wants one one uh, standing mount. He has a particular bird he wants for the standing and one particular bird he wants for the other one. So that's what we're going to give him. I'm going to get back into this elbow here again. Okay. Hmm. I'm looking for the hole here. Bear with me. <laughs> Boy, I sure hope I didn't lose that wing I was working on. <laughs> I might have. Uh, I might be on the wrong wing here. Anyway, I'm going to find this gal dang thing one way or the other. I know where it was. It was right in the joint. But you think I can find that now? Wasn't a very big hole, but it'll show up when I go to mount this bird up. I know it's right here. Right there. There it is. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and do the stitch in here. And I'm going to pull that over the top. That skin. What I'm going to do, I'm going to do this a little bit different. Cause I'm having a little difficulty here. So if I don't talk much, you'll know that I'm thinking. <laughs> I'll get a stitch started. That's the best thing to do. And I got it started here now. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and get this thing sewn up here. With this one here, if I don't sew this, this hole up here, this is going to show. And I don't want it to show. There we go. That this hole will actually spread apart and, and cause quite a gap, and we don't want that. So what I'm doing is I'm, I'm making sure that I can got everything covered. Sometimes you work and 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 things just are hard to. I don't know what it is, but sometimes they're just hard to get going. Yeah, you know, sometimes you run into trouble every time you look around. And this one here is just being kind of a particularly odd one. I, it's not particularly hard. I'm just having a particularly hard time seeing it, I guess. off, put a double loop in there and just kind of snug that baby up, pull her down slow. I know this wing was broke, in fact it was shattered, one of these wings here, it must have been the other one, it was shattered on the underneath side. So, we'll go ahead and pull this bone out here, the humerus bone I guess you'd call it, uh, get that baby out there. Sew up underneath here. You see this hole I have here. Okay, see it here? And this one. That I'm going to try to get taken care of. Try to see where it goes. 
straighten out the wing, get the feathers out of the way, and go ahead and get, get our stick started. Another thing you can do here is you can do the stapler. This wing will be hidden, it'll be to the inside. You could use a uh, stapler and staple this up, but well, sometimes I just don't do that. I, I just like sewing. <laughs> but anyway, what you do is you just, the regular baseball stitch will do it. Okay, keep the feathers out of the way. Go underneath. Back and forth and underneath. Just like so. second. Try to pull feathers out of the way if you get caught there. Make sure you get your bone up in there. You don't wanna, even though this is going to be to the other side, we want to do a nice job stitching it up. Now what we've got, we've got our bird ready to mount. 